So this power meter review is gonna be a little bit different than most of mine. Uh, most of my reviews I go through unboxing and components and installation and usage and app connectivity and all that kind of goodness. But with the power meter, that being the thing that tells you how much wattage or power you are producing while you're pedaling your bicycle, the only thing that actually matters is, is it accurate? None of the other fancy stuff matters if the fundamental accuracy question isn't answered. And in this case, there's been a lot of questions, particularly from Pro Tour teams. These are teams that are paid to ride this unit, have had problems and questions about the accuracy of this particular unit on their bicycles. And so last summer, I set up to start testing that. And now I have over eight months worth of data on this unit, comparing it to virtually every other uh, major power meter in the market, as well as smart trainers, and not just my eight months plus worth of data, but also data from other people on other continents with other units and comparison sets of theirs with the goal of showing you that it's not just me or this particular unit or a bunch of people I know, or even a bunch of pro teams that are struggling with this particular model, but in fact, it's that the unit itself simply is not accurate. And so I'm going to show you basically four core problems this power meter has. And keeping in mind that any one of these problems on any other power meter would be a deal breaker. So this very first data set is such a great example of the very first problem. Uh, now, on this power meter, there are two chain rings, the big chain ring and the little chain ring. Uh, and essentially, when you're in the little chain ring, your power meter data is accurate. Uh, in your big chain ring, it's accurate until it's inaccurate for one of the other problems I'll talk about. But for the moment, we'll just pretend that big is accurate, little is inaccurate. You may be like, well, just don't ride the little chain ring. Except that doesn't work when you're going up a, a mountain or something like that. So to just demonstrate this, here is a trainer ride bunch of intervals. I basically switch back and forth between the big ring and the small ring throughout the entire workout over the course of an hour and a half. And you can see every time it went to the small ring, it immediately went askew. And this is compared to a Wahoo Kicker V6, as well as a pair of Garmin Rally power meter pedals on the bike at the exact same time. So I can compare those data sets and see the other two units had no problems, and this one immediately had problems. And just a quick note, if you are finding this video interesting or useful, now would be a great time to go ahead and whack that like button there. It really does help with this video and the channel quite a bit. And of course, it's not just this one workout. Here's another workout where I split the workout in half instead. And I said, the first half is a big ring, and the second half is a small ring, and boom, it's inaccurate on the second half. Or this workout here, where I went ahead and said, you know what, I'm just going to leave it a small ring the entire time, uh, and it'll be inaccurate the entire time. And the same goes here for this other one. And these are different trainers, by the way. So I've got, for example, Wild Kicker V5 in there, Wild Kicker V6 in there, a Zwift Hub in there. I'm going to show you some other trainers in just a second. And you can see across all of these, it's inaccurate. And it's not just my particular unit. Uh, here is a data set sent in from a DCR reader, a DC Rainmaker reader, uh, that on a Tax Neo 2T with a set of Garmin Vector 3 pedals in the exact same offset on this ride he did entirely in this small ring. In this case, it's in simulation mode as opposed to erg mode, but you can see the exact same offset the whole time of roughly 15 to 20 watts. Now imagine you're a pro team and you're trying to do mountain stage after mountain stage in the Tour de France. In this case, it's inflating your power by 20 plus watts. That's pretty much a deal breaker. Those long mountain climbs are incredibly useful from a data standpoint and having all your data be wrong is really hard to deal with, both during the ride itself, and of course for a pro team, a pro rider in the Tour de France, they're following what the peloton is doing, but now you look at things like TT stages, where they're individual uh, TT pace stages, and they are hyper-focused on their power meter. So the essence of issue number one is that anytime you use a small ring, it's off by 20 watts. So let's talk about issue number two, which is that there are essentially two sides to a dual side of power meter. Uh, so you imagine this is the power meter right here, this is the right-hand side, uh, also called the drive side, uh, and this this is the left-hand side called the non-drive side. Uh, now, there's two different sensor sets. There is one right here you can see, strain gauges lie underneath that against the crank arm. Uh, and then the same is true on the right-hand side. You can see right there, and it goes kind of down below it there. Uh, and there's electronics in here and a bunch of other stuff, but what you need to know essentially is there's two sides and it's measuring independently. Uh, but in the case of the Shimano power meter, when it has a sprint, any sort of surge effort on the right-hand side, you start to see dropouts. And a great way of exemplifying this is a data set from Shane Miller, otherwise known as GP Llama on YouTube. And you can see right here, he did four sprints and then a bunch of steady state work for a while, and then a fifth sprint at the very end. Uh, and on these four sprints right here, for each one of these little surges, uh, basically the right side drops out by about 100 watts. So you're about 100 watts lower uh, power than the other two units. In his case, a Wahoo Kicker V5, as well as a set of Favero Asioma pedals. And again, all these are power meters and smart trainers that are well trusted across the industry. And we're cycling through a bunch of different units here to show that this one is the one that's the problem child. Uh, and so how do we know it's the right-hand side? 
Well, the cool part about the DCR Analyzer software suite, DC RAM Create Analyzer software suite, is that it breaks out the data recorded by the head units that shows me the left side and the right side. So I can see very clearly here that the right side of just the Shimano unit basically falls flat. It kind of cuts short compared to the Vera Asioma unit, which shows the correct power level. But the problem is on the fifth sprint, it got it right. You may be like, well, why is that a problem? Well, that's because four to five times it's wrong and you won't ever know which time it's wrong. You don't know which time it's right and which time it's wrong. For example, here's an indoor ride I did in a large ring, big ring, uh, and it was fine. It was basically perfectly fine the entire time for the most part. Uh, I didn't exhibit any of the small ring issues because I wasn't in a small ring. And in this case, even my surges didn't exhibit the right side dropout issue. But then we get to the next problem. And for this, we're gonna head outside. It's probably easier to see out there. In this case, I did a ride with my wife. Uh, and I note that because when I rode with my wife, I rode a little bit easier. And that's not a humble brag, but it's actually really important to understand the particular problem. Uh, and so what you see here is I'm pedaling along, but I briefly easy pedal or stop pedaling for a couple seconds here and there. Uh, and what happens is the Shimano power meter just keeps on plowing through. You see the line go cut across there, uh, and you may be like, oh, the, it's actually the Garmin Rally that's dropping out. Mm -mm. I had stopped pedaling, and the Shimano just keeps on pretending I'm pedaling the entire time. And this will become a bigger issue in just a second. But just to show inconsistencies, on this next ride right there I did by myself, no real major problems. It was all big ring because I live in the Netherlands in a giant pancake. So basically a big ring the entire time, no major sprints for the most part, and not too much of an issue. But then of course, as you dig in deeper to any of these rides, you start to see those right side dropouts again. Uh, here, for example, is a ride I did uh, where you see kind of a bit of a surge effort there, about 700 watts or so, and boom, the right side drops slower by about 100, 150 watts or so. Uh, and again, that causes the entire sprint to drop low as well. But let's back up real quick to that whole soft pedaling thing, because this is actually a much bigger deal than it may look like. Uh, so you see here this next little set I did, uh, basically where I went ahead and I just simply surged up to about 300 watts, nothing too big, and then I either soft pedaled or I stopped entirely pedaling. In this case, you can see the slight delay on the cadence from the Shimano, but they caught all of these soft pedaling stop things correctly, except the Shimano never actually stopped producing power. It produced power the entire time for every single one of these little drops right there, which is crazy. So now you take that and translate it into the Pro Peloton, right? They're out there in a big group of 180 riders, uh, and there's a lot of soft pedaling or pausing and pedaling because they're in this really tight group. That's just part of the whole concept of Peloton, that you have efficiencies gained from not pedaling when other people are pedaling or pedaling easier, et cetera. That means every time they soft pedal or easy pedal or stop pedaling, they're gonna to continue to produce higher wattages than they actually are, which means all of that data that entire time is completely overinflated and useless. It's, it's garbage data. And you can see why the pro teams are having such a problem with this unit, because all their data looks way more optimistic than it actually is. And to be clear, this is not like a communications interference sort of issue or anything like that. Uh, I, for example, if you look right here, this is the heart rate sensor connected to those same uh, bike computers and head units, and it continues all the way through. There's no dropouts there. Uh, and I've tested this on dozens of different uh, bike computers and head units. And of course, this is then when you get to take both those problems and squish it together to get a totally different problem, which is if you've stopped pedaling entirely and then you start sprinting, there's about a three to four second lag before it realizes what's going on there. Uh, and in that case, you basically undercut your power. Here by over 300 watts, it undercut my power because by the time I caught up to that realization, I've already stopped sprinting for that short little sprint duration right there. And of course, from there, you also then get the right side dropout issue that you can see right here, where again, it dropped out the power entirely on the right-hand side, reducing it by over 100 plus watts uh, for this particular sprint. And again, I can show you data set after data set after data set from this. So we're, again, eight months of data, my data, Shane Miller's data, uh, reader's data. Here's one set from Shane Miller showing that exact easy pedaling problem uh, where it basically drops out. And he's literally half a world away on a totally different unit uh, through an entire different distribution cycle seeing the exact same thing. And ultimately, you're gonna pick here which which one of your power meter poisons you want. And essentially there are six core issues that I've kind of identified. Uh, the first one is the right hand side of course is inaccurate in sprints as I showed. Uh, any sort of power surge it basically kind of drops out a fair bit. Uh, the second one being the small chain ring. Anytime you're in that small chain ring, you are fundamentally inflating your power by about 20 watts or so. Uh, the third one being that a lot of times when you stop pedaling, it just keeps on showing you're pedaling even though you're not actually pedaling, and even though it knows the cadence has stopped as well. The fourth one being it'll undercut many of the shorter sprint surges uh, by potentially hundreds of watts, depending on that particular uh, surge and what you're doing before it and after it. The fifth one being it doesn't handle any sort of easy pedaling, uh, so it just doesn't do that well. It'll often drop out or it'll pick up things, and it's just, it's just kind of a general disaster there. Uh, and the last one being that the cadence sensor itself is also laggy by about 
two to three seconds, which again, you saw manifested itself throughout many different portions and many different data sets here. And so Matt, now you're probably asking yourself, can Shimano fix this thing? Uh, and the answer is probably not my guess. Uh, so basically this is their second generation of this unit. And the first one was just as bad. It was bad in different ways, but it was st still bad. Uh, they have not updated the firmware on this unit since last May 25th, version 4.10 is the most recent version, which is what all of my testing is on. Uh, and it's, I don't expect them to be able to change it. And I've talked to a bunch of different people in the power meter industry, you know, people that make power meters, companies that make power meters that have torn this entire thing apart to see like what the issue is. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot of speculation. It could be uh, the actual crank arm design. It could be the strain gauges. It could be electronics, could be all sorts of different factors. Uh, and most of the companies I've talked with don't think it's actually the uh, crank arm design or even the strain gauges themselves, but uh, something in the electronics that weren't designed for this particular application. Uh, and certainly Shimano would have caught this. Like the entire uh, small chain ring, big chain ring thing has been, it's like a test number one on the test that you do when you're testing a power meter, uh, for, especially for a company, but even for me or anyone else. Uh, that's a problem that used to exist like 13 to 15 years ago in power meters where it would have problems between the small chain ring and the big chain ring. But these days, like that's, that's ludicrous to not catch that in testing. So my guess is they caught it in testing. They know it exists. Uh, they know their pro teams are upset about it. And the pro teams are simply using other power meters in training. In racing, they're going on and dutifully using, you know, this unit as a required to by contractual uh, sponsorships because Shimano pays way more than anyone else. There is no company in the pro Peloton that pays more money to the pro Peloton than Shimano. They sponsor roughly about half of the teams out there in the pro uh, world tour peloton uh, including all their power meters and thus they're hoping that you'll overlook the inaccuracies of this unit and the fact that this unit is useless for training and racing uh, by sponsoring all these pro riders but of course we've also seen some pro tour teams go to other power meters even while having this installed uh, for example last year lotto sudel went ahead and installed four eyes power meters on this to be able to go ahead and kind of cover up the fact that this didn't work at all and there are plenty more examples of that outside the public eye for what riders are actually training with uh, day in and day out but of course that's not really most of us most of us go and buy a bike and i'm actually looking at buying a new tri bike uh, last little while here and a lot of those mid to higher end bikes do have this unit already equipped on there you can't even take it off as an option so you're basically basically spending an extra thousand bucks for this power meter when you could spend a thousand bucks or even half that much money on a far more accurate, far more capable power meter. Uh, but that isn't really an option on a lot of those, again, mid to higher end bikes to take this particular unit off. And thus at this point, I have nothing more to say. What else is there to say? Like I've shown you, it's a dumpster fire in accuracy with my data set, other people's data set, other reviewers' data sets, uh, and demonstrated that over the course of eight months worth of riding. Uh, ultimately, if you found this video interesting and useful, you could help with the channel by whacking that like button or hit the subscribe button for plenty more sports technology goodness. With that, have a good one.